Hello. I've been accused of being disruptive and persistent by government officials and by companies and by a swimming pool attendant. <laughs> I'm OK with that. This is my job as Director of Sense About Science to seek out and consider the evidence on which factual statements and decisions are based, whether they're by companies or governments or by media or by celebrities. <coughs> Unsurprisingly, and much to the embarrassment of my children, I tend to do the same thing in other parts of my life as well. So when our local swimming pool insisted that I pay to stay and watch one of our children have a one-to-one -one lesson with a qualified instructor, I couldn't resist asking for evidence for their claim that this was in the interests of child protection. And when Luton Airport forced me to pay two pounds for one of their see-through plastic bags to put my toiletries through the scanner instead of using one of my own, I couldn't resist asking for evidence as to how this contributed to national security. Such questioning of authority isn't always welcome. But it's not a character trait. I'm not a pedantic person. I'm actually quite shy about making a fuss. I found, rather, that asking for evidence is a way of changing things that are wrong. I've discovered that it can have a transformative effect. Now, in some ways, it's strange that we don't all question rules and policies more. We're all supposedly much less deferential than our grandparents' generation. Where my granddad said, you know best, Doc, we all say, let's Google it. We are discerning consumers. We're informed patients. We're sceptical voters. We're savvy information gatherers with a world of search engines at our fingertips. We're ever seeking that second opinion. And yet, yet we seem to have a problem with challenging authority in what has been called an age of complexity, where it's difficult for us to perceive and easily understand the risks around us and the options as to what we might do about them. Where despite the fact that we have access to information orders of magnitude greater than previous generations, we rely even more on experts and authorities to tell us about the risks we face and what we might do about them. Will multi-million pound flood barriers actually prevent future flooding? Is the library really so dangerous that a seven-year-old should not be allowed to return a book alone? We worry that we haven't perceived the fullness of the risk, so we don't question. It's not that we think that authorities are doing the right thing necessarily about various risks. I've discovered that hundreds of parents are angry about swimming pool rules that mean that an adult is only allowed to take one small child swimming, despite the fact that there's no evidence that taking more than one small child swimming was presenting a problem. Or if you look below the line on any online article about restrictions at airports, you'll discover no end of stories about the ridiculous officiousness with which items have been confiscated that clearly do not present a security threat empty water bottles and flasks, the plastic gun on a child's toy cowboy, or apprehending a guy for wearing a t-shirt with a cartoon transformer with a robot carrying a cartoon gun. And sometimes we're suspicious. Sometimes we're suspicious that the wrong thing is being done. So when governments around the world a few years ago stockpiled anti-flu vaccines, and the UK government alone spent £600 million. There were discussions everywhere from the letters pages of national newspapers to the local pub, people wondering, was this a good response to the threat of bird flu? Or a panic reaction? Or a deal with drugs companies? So we may be suspicious or frustrated, but we're not most of us experts in kidnap risks and computer viruses and whether medicines work. And so we don't question. And questions often made even harder, often, often really uncomfortable, because it invites suspicion. Are you on the side of risk? 
If you question rules that stop adults coming into schools to read with children, are you on the side of a paedophile? If you object to the no liquids rule at airports, are you trying to help the terrorists? It can be pretty intimidating. A few years ago, I was on the board of a junior football club and we had a situation where the league refused to register a group of our players because their young players, because their t-shirts uh, had their school uniform logo on, on their photographs for their league registration. Refused to register for that. As a result, we had half our players missing uh, and uh, we played a match, they got demoralised, they got injured, uh, and this was all in the interest of child protection and not having the photo on a, on a team sheet that basically their coaches see. So I went along to the next league meeting and I put a question down. Had there ever, ever been, I asked, an incident as a result of a child's <coughs> T-shirt showing on their league registration form? A, attempted abduction, perhaps. Well, the chair of the meeting introduced me as the woman who wants to question child protection, which is not a great place to find yourself. And it's difficult on security too. If governments introduce new rules to say, we must now uh, have our computers fully charged because the batteries might be turned into bombs, who are we to say otherwise? But this lack of questioning is creating a dangerous situation. Because when untrue claims go unchallenged, we end up with policies that don't work. We end up with harmful and useful po useless policies, policies which do more harm than good, because they're not based on evidence. We just look around you at the consequences of some of this. I've mentioned some of the security theatre, but I haven't mentioned the half of it. Do you know that not one of the visible security measures that have been introduced since 9-11 would have prevented 9-11? Or that a review last year in the United States of those chemical swabbing machines that have been introduced into airports all over the world at great expense, supposedly to detect explosives, found that not one of them had ever detected an explosive. And look at the consequences of ill-founded policies where sceptical questioning has gone out of the window. Weapons of mass destruction, Y2K, the millennium bug. Look at the harm that's been done by misleading medical claims that have gone unchallenged or the damage to community activities when ill-founded risk management policies have been introduced and destroyed them because nobody asked whether they do more harm than good. Evidence matters. We, you and I, cannot outgun or outspend powerful organisations. So we must find a way to insist that what they do is justified. As the philosopher of science James Robert Brown said, They've got the guns and the money. What's left to the rest of us is knowledge. Well, that might sound like a high-blown way to tackle security at airports or rules at swimming pools, but it germinated my thinking about how to hold rule makers to account in a complex age. <clears throat> evidence matters, so we should ask for it. Now, asking for evidence is not the esoteric concern of boffins. You don't have to be qualified in medicine to ask the Department of Health for evidence that allowing people to smoke electronic cigarettes will lead to them smoking normal cigarettes. You don't have to have a career in MI5 to ask whether terrorists are really ever apprehended at airport check-in. Anyone can ask for evidence. In fact, we can and we must because asking for evidence does three important things. First, you may end up knowing more and making better decisions. You may find, as I did, that the evidence for the whooping cough vaccine was pretty convincing. And you may find, as I did, that the evidence that mobile phones fry your brain was rather less convincing. Second, you make organisations aware of what it is they do and don't know. So when my friend Carolyn Warner took up this ratio that had been introduced at swimming pools for one-to-one -one adult to child. She found that her local pool manager had no idea where it had come from. So she asked the pool management company, who also had no idea of the evidence on which it was based. So she went to the local authority and found that they too had no idea where it had come from. And she kept asking until she got to the British Prime Minister, who himself became curious about where this rule had come from 
and it's actually <laughs> resulted in a review by the National Water Safety Authorities um, and, and soon to be changed rule. So those are two important outcomes. You may know more and you make organisations question their certainty. But there's this third thing, and this is the transformative power of asking for evidence. It makes authorities accountable to you. It doesn't matter whether you can read a statistical analysis. The very act of asking for one parks your tanks on the lawn of decision makers. It provides essential discipline and accountability in public life. So it's powerful. And it, in some ways it doesn't matter whether you actually get a satisfactory result from asking for evidence on any specific issue. If you take the example, that example of the, the league, football league, and what happened there, well, they didn't provide any evidence, and there was none. But an interesting thing happened after that. In all their communications, they started to justify and explain what their rules were about. It was they who became defensive. And that's a sign that we're establishing accountability. But I've seen many things change as a, as a result of people asking too. For example, on MRI scanners, some years ago, there was an attempt to introduce rules not based on any evidence that would have meant that premature babies would have been fully anaesthetized to go into the scanner instead of mildly sedated. And it was the questioning of parents and researchers that actually led to those rules being looked at again and someone realised that no one had looked at the evidence and they were suspended. I've seen it happen on environmental policies. I've seen people change things by asking for evidence about medical claims and product labels. It's possible to change by questioning. That's its power. Even on those issues, even on those issues, that we find most uncomfortable, most awkward, where there's a stigma attached to questioning. A few years ago, someone I know called Laurie LeVar Pierce, who lives in the small town of Columbus, Mississippi, had a situation, her 10-year-old son asked if he could walk to soccer practice on his own in a late afternoon, short way away. She agreed and said she would follow him. He'd not gone more than three blocks before somebody had dialed 911 and the cops picked him up. The cops then threatened Laurie with child endangerment. And if that wasn't intimidating enough, the local newspaper ran a story castigating Laurie for exposing her child to stranger danger. Now, most of us would have found that a pretty intimidating situation to confront. But Laurie was having none of it. She phoned her local chief of police and she asked for evidence. She asked, is our town really so dangerous that a 10-year-old can't walk to soccer practice? on his own. And he conceded that it wasn't. So Laurie actually started a campaign to get kids playing outside. And she discovered that there was a risk, in fact. Because so few kids were playing outside, there were no longer any pavements and cycle paths uh, to accommodate them. So the risk was traffic. So she started a campaign to get those instated. And in fact, was joined in that campaign by the very police and the newspapers uh, that had originally castigated her. But it is awkward. It is awkward to ask. And perhaps the time when your family passports are held in the hand of some burly border official as your family waits to go on holiday isn't the time to start questioning why governments are downgrading their spending on counterintelligence whilst every summer introducing yet more bipping and bonging machines at the airport. But the more awkward the issue, the more likely it has passed without question. The more it has a safety label or a child protection or data protection or anti-terrorism, the more likely people have not asked basic questions about the evidence. So by asking for evidence, you're asking for the chain of reasoning. You're asking for understanding of the issue. What, what, who's looked at what the basis uh, of the problem is? How do we know that the solution is really going to tackle that problem, that there's not a better solution? There's not a better policy. And how do we know that it's not going to introduce more harm than good or create new problems? And if any of this evidence exists, has anyone looked at it? Organisations do feel accountable for evidence. People know that in order to have legitimacy, there must be some basis for what they say. 
I mean, consider this. If you criticise a local authority for its recycling policy, and in the case I'm thinking of, one that looked to be far less environmentally beneficial than many others, what you'll get back is some blather about commitment to the environment. If you ask for the evidence on which it's based, they'll feel obliged to provide it. Organisations do feel accountable for evidence. It goes for everyone. Industry bodies, media, governments, companies. They know that they can't just brush questions aside if they expect to continue to be taken seriously. Now, our societies are only going to get more complex. And the risk of ending up with knee-jerk reactions to complex problems, with well-meaning and well-intentioned policies that aren't founded on evidence, those risks are high. But it's within our power to insist on justification. Or even on those issues that we feel are too complex that we cannot fully understand ourselves. And even on those issues that we find the most difficult to challenge. In fact, the very thing that we think stops us not having that full picture is our power, asking for it. By asking for evidence, we can put ourselves back in the conversation, whether with government officials or swimming pool attendants, and open the door to changing those things that just don't work. Thank you.